Today is Tuesday, October 4th, 2016. We are on the record at 1.04 p.m. This time with uh, witness, please raise your right hand and be sworn. You do solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Could you please introduce yourself? I am Deputy Lopez, uh, Edward Lopez. My last name is spelled L-O-P-E-Z. I'm currently employed with the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office. My ID number is 217. Okay. And that ID number, has that always been true for you? Uh, while I've been on road patrol, yes. Okay. Um, you qualified that. Can you tell me why you qualified that? Uh, what I mean, I guess, was it ever, ever, was your ID number ever anything different? Yes, because when I started with the sheriff's office, I started at the, uh, I started working at the, at the jail over at Rock Road. Okay. And back then my number was 538. Okay. Um, I introduced myself earlier. I'm T.C. Roberts. I represent uh, the estate of Gregory Hill in an action against Deputy Newman and the sheriff in his official capacity. Um, I'm here to ask you some questions about an event that happened on January 14, 2014. Um, my understanding is that you were at least involved in that somehow, and I want to ask you a little bit about that. I'll probably ask you uh, a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your background to begin with, um, and then we'll probably dive in. I don't. I hope we're not here more than an hour, but we could be. Um, the there's sort of some ground rules, and maybe. Um, Ms. Baranko is explain those to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna be asking you some questions. Um, please let me finish my question before you answer. Sometimes when we when we talk conversational, we interrupt re each other. It's it's not it's never rude. Um, and trust me, I'm not gonna be I'm not rude to you when I correct you or I tell you to stop. I'm just making sure we have a complete record. I'm also making it uh, easy for this kind lady here that's taking down every word that we're t we we're saying. Um, yes is, and no's. Uh, if my answer, if my question calls for a yes or no, I expect a yes or no. Head nods and ah uh and ah uh make it, again make it difficult for Madam Court Reporter. Although we are dealing with a video, the head nods will come off. But I, if if I clarify and ask if that's a yes or if that's a no, I'm not being rude. I'm just making sure that um, we have a complete record. So, um, how long have you been employed by the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office? 12 years. Okay, so that would have been 2000, uh, 2004. 2004. What was your first job here? I started uh, working at the jail. Okay. That's what were you doing at the jail? I was a deputy. I was uh, a deputy at the jail uh, taking care of the inmates. Okay. And before 2004, well, let me ask you this. Was your job, your first job here at St. Lucie County Jail, was that your first job in law enforcement? Yes. Okay. What was your job? What were you doing before you decided to uh, embark on a career in law enforcement? I was a respiratory therapist technician in uh, in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Uh, what brought you to Florida? Uh, the cleanliness, the beautifulness of it. Okay. It's like paradise. Okay. Um, and I don't need to know your your current address, but do you re reside in St. Lucie County? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, what city do you reside in? Port St. Lucie. Okay. That's a little south of Fort Pierce? Yes. Okay. And um, you're wearing a suit today. Are you on duty? No, sir. Okay. Um, what is your normal, well, what is your current job role now here? I'm uh, I'm I'm with Road Patrol. Okay. Were you with Road Patrol on January fourteenth, two thousand fourteen? Yes. Okay. So that job role hasn't changed. No. Okay. What does Road Patrol do? We patrol the streets. We uh, answer to uh, calls, disturbances, uh, you know, crimes, any any type of crimes on the streets. Uh, conduct traffic stops for violations, traffic <coughs> violations. Okay, and in January, on January 14th, 2014, what was your shift? I was working, uh, we usually start at 2.30, but it's a 3 to 11 shift. And I believe 
Deputy Newman said he started at three. Would his shift also have been a three to 11? Yes. Do you remember working that shift with him? Yes. Um, not necessarily as it relates to this incident in particular, but this time of year, do you remember working with? Uh, I believe, yes, we were both on the same, uh, yeah, we were both on the same schedule. Okay. Prior to this incident that we're here to talk about today, had you worked, had you responded to calls with Deputy Newman before? I'm not sure, but no, I, I'm not. I, I'm. I'm not sure. I don't remember if I did or not. As far as <clears throat> any relationship between you and Deputy Newman, um, how would you describe that, that relationship? If there is a relationship. Well, th there isn't. We're co-workers. We, we, we. I mean, you know, we work uh, the same agency. That's about it. Uh, you know, like everybody else, you know, we. They rotate us in shifts, so we, we get to work with everybody. However, I haven't worked hand in hand with Deputy Newman. Okay, and outside your professional relationship with Deputy Newman, do you have any other type of relationship with him? No. Okay. Um, and again, we're here to talk about what happened. Um, and let me ask you this this question first outside of this room today uh, and my questioning of you how many times have you told this story this story this regarding story. this incident I don't remember I mean, if I if, if, if I said to, to who to anybody to well let's talk about in your professional capacity as a law enforcement right. officer with anybody that, who may have investigated this accident? How many times have you told it? I don't remember speaking with anybody about it. Okay, um, do you remember giving a statement once? Yes, I did at the time of the incident. Do you remember giving five statements? I don't remember. I don't remember how many I did, but I did speak to I did give statements regarding the incident the day that it occurred and on the walkthrough. Do you remember who those statements were given to? Uh, Detective LeBeau, Detective, Lebeau, uh, Detective Briglia, and I believe Detective Taylor was there on the walkthrough. Have you done anything today to prepare for this deposition other than speaking with Ms. Barranco or Barranco? I, uh, I looked at at the uh, at the the notes from the day that I spoke to Deputy, uh, I mean uh, Sergeant LeBeau. Did you look at a transcript of that statement? Right. Okay. Did that help you remember things? Somewhat. I don't. Is there anything you did, that you read that you disagreed with in that statement? That I disagree with? Yes, sir. From that day to today, I, I, I believe everything I've, I mean, what I said there, I mean, I was nervous that day. And what I said is, you know, I, I believe as far as disagreeing, um, I'm not sure if I disagreed with anything. Okay, and you said you were nervous that day. Why were you nervous? Oh, I was scared. I was going to get shot, and, and that was that was very frightening to me. Okay, and my, my understanding is that you gave this statement three hours, more than three hours after the shooting occurred. Were you still nervous and scared then? Yes. Scared of what? Well, scared may not be the right word, but I, I, was, uh, I, I was nervous based on what had happened. I, I was... Uh, I, w I was nervous. I was in shock. I was, you know. When you I, gave this statement, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't mean to cut you off. Were you saying something? No. Basically, that's it. Um, when you gave the statement to De Detective LeBeau, Detective Briglia, were you aware that Gregory Hill was deceased? No. So you gave the statement before. It was determined that he was dead. 
Correct. And the walkthrough, my understanding, is that happened the next day? Correct. Okay. Do you remember that? I, rem I remember going through the walkthrough, yes. Do you remember, uh, well, who was, who was at the walkthrough? It was uh, Detective LeBeau uh, and uh, Detective Taylor. That's Timothy Taylor? I, I believe his first name is Timothy. Not, I'm not the sure. Not the tool man, but Timothy Taylor, the <laughs> officer here with St. Louis County Sheriff. Detective, detective Taylor. Taylor, okay. Taylor yeah. <laughs> um, when you gave that walkthrough, was that video recorded? I don't remember if it was being video recorded. Do you remember if it was audio recorded? I don't remember if it was audio recorded either. I was just talking to Deputy Le uh, Detective LeBeau as he was asking me the questions. Did he ever tell you that you didn't really have to talk to him? He said, yes, he said it was vo uh, that my statements would be voluntarily, yes. Okay, and you chose to voluntarily give your statement? Sure. Okay. Have you ever had an incident, um, or you've been involved in an incident where you were required to give a statement to a St. Lucie County deputy, or a detective? Uh, yes. Okay, how many times? Once. What was that related to? Uh, they were investigating uh, something related to a traffic stop where it involved another deputy, and I happened to be uh, given a statement for as a witness. What happened in that? What, 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 what was your statement in that case? Well, I, um, they, I stopped the vehicle, and in stopping the vehicle, another deputy uh, came up on scene. Uh, it was busy that day. There were calls holding. Um, I believe I had completed my traffic stop, and uh, the driver was uh, suspended, so she was waiting for a licensed driver. I, uh, I went back in service and went to respond to another call. In doing so, um, I later found out that the deputy that stood by waiting for the licensed driver uh, ended up towing the vehicle, um, which later on determined to be um, not the right thing to do. Okay. That, that, that incident didn't involve any force or excessive force? Or force no, for, or no, 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 no use of force. Have you ever, have you ever discharged your firearm in the performance of official law enforcement duties? No. When you gave the initial statement to Detective LeBeau, where were you? And what I mean by that is my understanding is that you were on the scene. Is that fair? That's fair. Um, where on the scene were you? We were sitting inside of one of the detective's vehicles. Okay. Do you know where that vehicle was parked as it relates to the, the garage door at this house that you responded to? It was parked on Avenue Q, the next block over on west to, to, to where the incident took place. Okay. Do you remember how long you were at that scene that night? Or that day? I don't remember exactly, no. Do you remember what time it was when you responded to the, the house, 1501 Avenue Q? I'm not exactly sure, but I believe it was 3 to 3.30. Sometime within 3 and 3.30, that's when we received the call. And when you departed from that scene, was it dark or daylight? It was dark. 
Okay. Yeah, but you don't remember the time? No, I don't. You remember what time you got home that night? No. We went to we went to the sheriff. We came here to the sheriff's office, and then we went home. I don't remember the time now. What was the purpose of coming here? They asked us to come here in case they had any additional questions or they needed to speak to us. They being who? Um, the captain asked us to to come okay. to the sheriff's office. Who is um? I believe his name's John Weiss. Does that ring a bell? John, we uh, John Wise is another deputy. Deputy Wise? Yes, sir. Do you remember seeing Deputy Wise that night? No. The whole night you never saw him? I don't remember seeing him, no. Okay, because um, he, he wrote a report on this. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I was aware he wrote the initial report. Why is he writing the report? Can you help me understand why someone that wasn't involved was writing the report? I don't know. A supervisor may have asked him to, to write the report. If you had gone, well, you responded to 1501 Avenue Q for a loud noise complaint, is that fair? Correct. A uh, loud obscene noise complaint? Correct. If that call would have gone um, Otherwise uneventful. Maybe you go, you show up to uh, Mr. Hill's house. He's got loud music playing. You make contact with him, and he turns the music down. Correct. And you depart from the scene. Would there have been a report written? No. Why not? Because it's no, no nothing. Nothing took place. We went. We we went there. We spoke to him, and went to Mr. Hill, and he. He said, all right, he lowers the music and we leave. We just advised dispatch that the music was lowered and that, that's the extent of that. Okay. If you made contact with Gregory Hill, and this is a hypothetical, this is not obviously what, not what happened, but if you made contact with Gregory Hill, he gave you his ID and he ran a background on him and found that he had warrants, for instance and you made an arrest, who would have wrote that report? I would have. Okay. But you don't know why John Weiss wrote this report? I don't, <clears throat> I don't know, no. Do you know, well, let me ask you this. Did you write any report related to this incident? No. Were you asked to? No. Were you told not to? No. Do you think that's odd that you weren't weren't asked to write a report? Check to the phone. Go ahead. You can answer. Can you ask it? Do you think it's odd that you weren't asked to document this this incident? Check to the form. Go ahead. Other than giving a, a recorded statement to Lebeau and Riglia, do you think it's odd that you weren't asked to write a report? No. Why not? Um, based on the severity of this this uh, incident, uh, unfortunate incident, um, I believe that uh, the detectives are the ones to write the the uh, the reports when when something like this happens. Okay. And the detectives, is there a division that they that? When there's an officer involved shooting, involving St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office, is there a particular department that investigates those act, those incidents or division? From the St. Lucie County Sheriff's, the detectives. The detectives, is there a, some departments are broke down into theft crime detectives right. and, and homicide. Is it a particular breakdown like that? Is there a particular sect of this, this agency that investigates officer-involved shootings? They, we do have uh, detectives that handle different areas. However, I don't know which detective would be assigned to handle this. Okay. Um, detective LeBeau, do you know him? Yes. If he walked in here, would you be able to recognize him? Yes. Do you know what he's in charge of? 
He's a he's a he's a sergeant now. He's a, he's on my squad as a supervisor. Okay. And on January 14, 2014, what department or division was he a part of? He was with the Detective Bureau. Okay. What does CID stand for? The Criminal Investigation Division. Do you know what that, that division does? They investigate the, um, you know, they investigate the crimes that, that take place. Did you ever interview any witnesses related to this incident? No. Um, how long do you think, and I'm asking for an estimate here, but how long do you think you, you spoke with Detective LeBeau and Briglia when you gave this um, informal statement, or this, this formal statement? I, I, I don't know exactly how long it was. Did you have any conversations before that statement was taken with LeBeau or Briglia? No. Anybody ever tell you what to say? No. Did you make any phone calls from the scene? No. Um, I may have called my wife to tell I was gonna be late, but and, and I didn't discuss any specify a reason why. Okay. Um, did you have any conversations with Deputy Newman at the scene? At the scene, well, we were, basically they were like strategical conversations. We were behind our patrol car and it felt like it was forever and we were just keeping an eye on the garage itself and on the side of the, of the house to make sure that. Okay, let me help clarify what I'm trying to ask, I guess. Um, after, Scratch that. Who was the f the next person to arrive at the scene, if you're aware? The next person that I saw arrive on the scene was Deputy Paul Pearson, but he didn't. He didn't. He was nowhere near us. He he came and he started to establish the perimeter. Okay. Everyone else that responded to the scene, they just established the perimeter. No one came near us. At some point, and. Let me know if I'm incorrect, but at some point, a, a perimeter is established, and you are not a part of being in charge of that perimeter. Is that fair? That's correct. All right. After that point, did you have any conversations with D D Deputy Newman? Not that I recall. I don't remember. Did you ever see him on the phone that day? No. When you gave your statement, was he nearby? No. When he gave his statement, were you nearby? No. Do you know where he was when you gave your statement? Uh, exactly where, I don't know. He was outside of the vehicle. We were, when I gave my statement, I was inside of the vehicle and then when I completed my statement, I got out the vehicle, and I believe that Newman, if I'm not mistaken, Newman, Newman was asked to go in the vehicle and provide a statement. So you believe you, you gave your statement first? I'm not sure if it was me or Newman, but I know I was, when I gave my statement, I was inside the vehicle, and it, it, Newman was not there, no. Okay. Um, and I, maybe I should have asked this earlier. Um, you've got a, a bit of an accent. Do you speak English as a First language or a second language? Second. Okay. Uh, when did you learn English? From uh, when I was born. I, I was born and raised in New York. Okay. Maybe that's where the accent comes off. Okay. So you do you, do you speak Spanish? Yes. Um, when you were growing up, is that the first word that you said? Was it a Spanish word? <laughs> that's a good question. I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> were you there? Uh, yeah, right. I don't even remember. Uh, um, do you have to use your Spanish speaking skills in your work as a law enforcement officer? I do. Okay. I, I'm, I've been asked to interpret, yes. And I believe you were commended by one of your superiors that that was actually a good asset. Do you remember that? Um, that you were a lot of help because you could speak Spanish? I've been commended a few times for that. Okay. 
Um, I have your personnel file. Have you ever been reprimanded for anything? Reprimanded for anything? Uh, yes, I uh, I received. It was supposed to be a a verbal um, reprimand, but obviously they put it on paper. I I failed. <clears throat> I forgot uh, to show up on one of my details, off-duty details. Okay. Anything else? Any other discipline? No. Um, have you ever given a deposition before? Uh, for cases in which I've arrested people before. Criminal prosecution cases? Yes. That kind of comes with territory, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, have you ever given a deposition outside of those proceedings? No. Have you ever been a plaintiff to a lawsuit? Have I been a plaintiff for a lawsuit? Have I sued somebody? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I did. Is that the Greenscapes? Yes. Tell me about that. I think it was Greenscapes. I don't remember the name of the company, but yes. What was that about? I, um, I was on my way to work one morning, and uh, I, uh, I was at the light on Orange Avenue and uh, Kings Highway. I was traveling westbound on 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 Orange Avenue. Uh, it was early in the morning. The the roads were wet from the dew from the morning dew on the, on the roads. Uh, one of the employees from Greenscape was uh, in and out of traffic with the with the lawn mower as he was mowing the lawns. Um, he uh, he happened to cut off a, a white uh, vehicle. Uh, it was like a uh, a pickup truck that was in front of me. When he cut him off, the pickup truck slammed on the brake. When the uh, pickup truck slammed on the brake, <laughs> I attempted to stop and I lost control of the bike. And it, you know, because the guy came, he the pickup truck got in, he almost hit the uh, lawnmower driver, and um, I lost control of the bike and I broke my arm. I had third degree burns and. Uh -huh. When you say bike, you mean motorcycle? A motorcycle, okay. yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay, I just wanted to clarify. Um, did you, did you have a lawyer for that? Yes. Who was your lawyer? I don't even remember his name. When was this incident? I had just started working, it was back in, I believe it was 2014, I mean 2004. Okay, and were you on duty at the time of the, the collision? Yes, I was on my way to work. Okay, you were on your way to work on right. your motorcycle? On my motorcycle, okay. personal motorcycle. So I imagine there was no workers comp claim made for that? No. Okay. I, I had just started work. I didn't even have sick time. <laughs> I, I was fortunate that the staff uh, collect some money to help me out. All right, let's talk about... Let's talk about the incident itself. I know we've kind of touched on it a little bit, but I want you to essentially walk me through your actions all the way up until the point there are shots fired. Um, Deputy Newman was uh, dispatched to, to the loud noise complaint at a 1501 Avenue Q. I happened to be uh, talking with Deputy Newman and uh, De uh, Deputy Paul Pearson, which he's now a, de a detective. Uh, Deputy uh, Pearson had called me regarding, uh, I, I, I used to uh, have a fingerprint machine to identify people who were refusing to give their identifications. When I got there, uh, Deputy Pearson no longer needed uh, my services, he, uh, the person he was out with provided him the information he needed. And uh, we just stopped and we were talking, Deputy Newman, Deputy Pearson and I, we was talking. And uh, that's when Deputy Newman received a call for the uh, loud noise complaint. Okay, I wanna stop you there. Where were you guys when you received that call? It was at Avenue Q in the church. I, I believe it was, a, I'm not exactly sure, but I would believe it was Avenue Q and, and North 32nd Street. Is that north or is that? 
east or well, Avenue Q runs east and west. Is that fair? Uh, correct. Was that east of the 1501 at location or west? No, that was uh, west. Okay. Um, it would be around 33rd, you know, usually North 33rd is like 33rd Street, 32nd Street or in that area. Um, all right. So you you guys get a call or Deputy Newman gets a call? Correct. All right. And you were saying? Um, Deputy Newman gets a call to, to the noise complaint. And then uh, dispatch also dispatch uh, Deputy Jackson, uh, idea number 205 over as a backup unit for Deputy Newman. However, he was a little ways from the area and I was already with Deputy Newman, so I advised dispatch that I would go with him and, and I, I would be his backup to the noise complaint. Okay. Um, so you essentially volunteered to go, is that fair? Correct. Um, Had you, had you ever responded to a noise complaint before? Yes, plenty of them. Is that pretty common in this area? Um, it, it's common everywhere. Sure. I, you, every, uh, people call 911 for no, noise complaints all the time. Help me understand a noise violation as it relates to prosecution, if any, or some sort of fine. Help me understand how that is penalized. By the laws. Well, it's an it's a it's an ordinance violation. Is um, but it's usually after ten o'clock at night. So whenever we get them, uh, we respond to them because we respond to everything, every call that you know is given by nine one one, and usually we respond to them and we knock on the door and we ask the people and we let them know that somebody complained about the noise and and all we can do is ask them to 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 be courteous and maybe lower the, the music a little. Mm -hmm. But that's the extent of that. Not an arrestable offense? Not unless it, it, not unless it was um, something where the person became violent with, with law enforcement. Sure. No, it's not. Um, what happens if they don't turn it down? Can you take further action? Um, Can we take further action? Not really. We can ask again and try in a nice way to have them lower the music. Most of the times they do. Okay. And if there's a, um, is there a form or maybe a citation that you can write them? If it's after 10 o'clock, yes. If it's after 10 o'clock at night, yes. Or if it's... Uh, during the night hours, yes, I believe we can we can cite them for a noise ordinance. I've, I haven't done it. Uh, Before this incident, had you ever responded to a noise ordinance during the daytime? Yes. Okay. And is there a violation occurring? I guess what violation is occurring if someone is playing their music loud at 3 to 3.30 on an afternoon? It's no violation. I don't believe that's a violation. However, depending on the circumstances, um, you know, like I said, we respond to all calls and we ask them to lower the music. And like I said, again, depending on the circumstances. <clears throat> all right, so... Newman gets this call. You decide that you're going to go with him. Correct. Who pulls up first? Newman was in front of me. He pulls up um, a little past, a uh, little past the garage door on the east of the garage door, and I pull up right behind him, right where the garage door is. You came from a westerly direction. Correct. Traveling we were traveling in an easterly east. direction. Correct. Um, and you parked in front of the house. He, I parked directly in front of the garage door, <clears throat> maybe an inch or two back, I'm not sure, and uh, he parked in front of the garage door, east of the garage door, in front of the house. You pulled in the driveway? No, 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 no. Okay. No, I, we were both parked on the street. Okay, and you followed him over to the scene? 
He exited his vehicle for us and started walking to the garage door, and I exited my vehicle, and yes, I was walking behind him toward the garage door. Okay. And <clears throat> so those cars arrived from the same direction? That's correct. And they were facing the same direction? Correct. Okay. Uh, what happened next? Deputy Newman knocks on the garage door. He knocks on the garage door and continues to knock as he's walking in the east direction, continues to knock on the garage door. The music was extremely, extremely loud. Um, he got no answer at the garage door. As he did, as he walked and knocked on the door towards the east side, I, I walked up to the garage door and I stood on the west side of the garage door next to the, to the wall the f that frames the garage door. Okay. Um, so the music was playing the entire time up until this point. From the moment you got out of your car, the music was playing. Oh, yeah, it continued to play. Okay. Uh, what kind of music was it? It was rap music. Okay. Um, do you listen to rap music? No. Okay. So do you know if any, did you recognize any of the songs? No. You weren't singing along, I guess? No, I don't, I don't listen to rap music. Okay. Um, when Newman, the deputy Newman, knocked on the garage door, did he use his hand? Did he use a, a device of some sort? His palm. He was knocking with his palm. What is an asp? An asp is an extendable baton. Okay. How do you, how do you spell it? I think it's A-S-P. A-S-P? Does it stand for something? You know what? I don't remember what it did. Okay. Stand for. You know what an ASP is? You probably carried one. Is that fair? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, he didn't use an ASP for a flashlight to knock on the door? I don't remember. Did you ever knock on the door? Yes. You knocked on the garage door or the front door? I knocked on the garage door. Um, did you use your hand? Yes, I did. Did you ever, my understanding, and I can show you the pictures, but there's on the, the west side of that garage, that wall, the outer perimeter wall, you can see through that, is that fair? On the west side of the wall in the garage? Yes, sir. There, like, there was uh, decorative bricks, yes, and you may be able to see through there. Yeah. Okay. Did you ever look in that at any point? No. Okay. Even before the, the shots were fired? No. Okay. Did you ever announce yourself as law enforcement? Yes. What did you say? I said sheriff's office, sheriff's office. Okay. And you got nothing? Well, when I banged on the gate, uh, on the garage door, I didn't say anything. The music was very loud, I didn't say anything. Okay. Um, when the garage door started to come up, that's when I made uh, several loud announcements, and I said, Sheriff's Office, Sheriff's Office. Okay. So the garage door started to go up. How far... At its maximum, how far did that garage door go up during this whole event? It went up past Mr. Hill's head. Okay. You saw Mr. Hill? Correct. You saw his face? Yes. You saw his eyes? Yes. His hairdo? Yes. What did, can you describe it? He had dreads. Okay. Did he have, what kind of clothing did he have on? He had a dark t-shirt and uh, blue jean shorts. Okay. Have you seen, since this incident, have you seen any photographs from this incident? Yes. When was that? Uh, when I was talking to Attorney Barranco. Okay. Um, what photos did you see? I saw photos of the scene, the entire scene where the car was parked. Um, I mean, the garage door. I saw a variety of photos. Okay. Um, you didn't take any of those photos, I presume? No. Um, 
As we sit here today, have you ever stepped foot in that garage? No. Not even with the, uh, the in the walkthrough? No. Uh, Doc, I believe you were at the door it was starting to go up. Let's take it from there, if okay. you don't mind. The door started to go up. As the door was going up, I yelled, Sheriff's Office, Sheriff's Office, and I yelled it because the music was very loud. When the door came up, as the door came up, I see Mr. Hill standing there, and I looked in his right hand, and he had a handgun in his right hand. When I saw the handgun, I immediately started shouting, gun, 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 drop the gun, drop the gun, drop the gun. At that point, Mr. Hill raised his right arm with the gun in my direction. As he raised the gun in my direction with the gun, uh, with, 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 with the right hand, um, Deputy Newman yelled, Hey, and then the fire, the gunfire went off. As soon as the shot started to, as soon as Deputy Newman yelled, hey, I could see Hill look towards Deputy Newman and then start to bring the, 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 the I keep on saying, hey, forgive me, it's the garage door. Um, as, as Deputy Newman yelled, hey, he looked towards Deputy Newman's side and it started to drop the garage door. At that point, Deputy Newman was already uh, firing. Okay. He had his... Mr. Hill had his left hand on the garage door. He had his left hand on the garage door. He had the right. He had the handgun on his right hand, right by his uh, right leg. And when I said "gun, gun, drop the gun," he raised the gun in my direction. As he raised the gun in my direction, Deputy Newman yelled, "Hey!" And he looked at Deputy Newman's direction, and then he started to drop the gate. But by then, Deputy Newman was already sh uh, firing off. Uh, several rounds. When the first shot was fired, what position was the garage door in? It was just starting to come down I, to be, I, I, I can't exactly tell you where it was. I, 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 it, it wasn't completely down as he started to fire though. Okay. My understanding is that, well, let me ask you this, are you aware that every bullet fired from Deputy Newman's gun pierced the door? Um, I, I, am I aware? I, I saw some pictures and yes. Let me ask you this. Did you see a bullet strike Mr. Hill's body at any time? No, I was, um, I was retrieved. As soon as he started to raise the gun in my direction, I started to draw my gun and retrieve back, and, and it, was, uh, it was a very frightening moment in my life. Can you describe the gun that Mr. Hill had? It was a, it was a small black gun. It, it appeared to me as though it was like a, a compact Glock. Okay. And you actually reported that on the radio. Are you aware of that? Yes, yes, I did. I said it, it, it looked like a black uh, a Glock. Are you aware that Mr. Newman, or Deputy Newman, described the exact make of the gun over the radio? Yes, I, um, yes I'm aware of that. Is that surprising to you? Um, no. Okay. Have you ever had conversations with him about guns? No. Do you know if he's uh, what I'd call a gun guy, and I know that's probably not the exact way, a gun enthusiast. Do you know if he's a gun enthusiast? I don't know. Um, you said, I believe you said he raised the gun in your direction. Tell me about that. Can you describe that any further? As, as soon as I said, drop the gun, drop the gun, he he raised he, the gun was pointing down by his knee and as soon as I said drop the gun drop the gun he lifted the gun in my direction he lifted the gun in my direction and as he's lifting his arm with the gun in my direction that's when Deputy Newman started to okay. uh, yell hey and started to fire did he point the gun at you he was lifting the gun in my direction I um like I said, at that point, I, start, I, I started retrieving real fast and, and, and drawing my gun. I knew he had the upper hand on me, and all I thought was, I'm going to get shot, and it's how it far bad. Were, how far were you from Greg Hill 
when the first shot was fired? I was close to him. I can't tell you exactly how far it was, but I thought I was going to get shot. Definitely thought I was going to get shot. Where was his body positioned as it relates to you and your positioning? And what I mean by that, I'm off to an angle of you right now. If I were right here, I'd be directly in front of you. If I were sitting where Ms. Barranco, I'd be off at an angle. Can you describe to me where Mr. Hill was as it relates to your body? He was almost directly in front of me, right there, and he was bladed a little. His body was a little bladed, but he was directly, almost directly in front of me. Okay. When you said almost directly in front, was right, he more directly to the left or more to the right? Um, right directly in front of me. Okay. At what point did you feel threatened? As soon as he started, to, uh, well, I felt threatened when I saw the gun, but as soon as he started to lift the gun, that's when I realized I was in trouble. Did you ever feel threatened as the garage door was coming up? Not as the gar garage door was coming up. When I saw the gun, that's when I started to feel threatened. Okay. Um, how would you describe this neighborhood? You've worked in this area since 2004. How would you describe this neighborhood? It's, it's a troubled neighborhood, um, but there is a lot of hardworking uh, people there, uh, a lot of very nice people there. They all get along with law enforcement very well. The church is always taking care of us. Uh, you know, the, the people welcome law enforcement there, but it is a troubled neighborhood. Have you ever... Well, what do you mean by that? What, what's going on that makes this neighborhood troubled? Um, there's drugs. There's okay. gangs in that neighborhood. There's drugs. There's violence. Um, have you ever responded to a call at that house before? That's then, no. Are you aware of anybody that has responded to a call at the house before this incident? Not that I'm aware of, no. Did you collect any evidence at the scene? No. I believe you said Pearson was the next one that you remember showing up. So that's the first person I saw showing up <laughs> on the perimeter. When I, I saw him, he was coming north on the, on the corner of right where the house is, on the east corner, on the east corner of, of Avenue Q and where the house is. And he came over the radio and he asked which house it was. We told him which was the house and he is, he, I believe he's held his position at that corner there. Okay. Um, I believe we got to the point where, well, well, let me ask you this. When did you draw your service gun? As soon as he started lifting his, as soon as he started lifting the gun in my direction, I started retrieving very quickly, and I drew my weapon. Okay, um, you didn't fire. No, sir. Is there any reason why you didn't fire? By the time I drew my weapon, Deputy Newman had already fired, uh, you know, multiple shots, and the gate came down. But you weren't aware that the threat had been, to use Newman's words, eliminated. You weren't aware of that. No. Check to the floor. Um, so, I imagine, and, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but as soon as that dark door goes down completely, after there's, there's shots, you're still on edge. Is that fair? I'm still? You're still, you're still oh, yeah. fearful. Oh, yes. Because you weren't sure that somebody had died. Right. Um, what did you do next? We both took position, uh, took cover behind my patrol car, and we stood there as as um, well, I had called as as the, as soon as the gate came down, as we were taking cover behind my my unit, I called over the radio: "Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired!" Okay, you actually got an award for that, right? Yes, I did. Uh, did you think that that you were just doing your job? Is that fair? I was just doing my job, sir. Uh, you were happy to? I guess you were. Were you happy to receive an award for that? I. The award it didn't mean anything to me. I, sure. My life was what meant everything to me, and that's what I was happy about, that I was still alive. Sure. Um,
What was Newman's next action that you observed? We both stood behind my patrol car taking cover okay. because we were both unsure of the unknown. We didn't know that Mr. Hill was deceased inside a garage. We didn't know if he was going to run out a back door, side door. We didn't know if he was going to shoot through the door. We, we, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know. Once that door came down, we didn't know any. We didn't know what was going on behind the door. All we can hear is the continuous loud music. Are you aware that that, that a gun was found within his back pocket? I was later informed, yes, that the gun was found in his back pocket. It wasn't found in his hand. That you're aware of. It was found in his back pocket. Okay. Um, at some point. Did you guys move from behind your cars? Or either one of you guys, uh, you and De Deputy Newman? No, we, we stood behind our uh, the car until the, um, uh, the SWAT team was called in. SWAT team took position, and then they sent the tank in to... Uh, cover us as they took us from the scene. As they removed us from the scene. How did they remove you from the scene? Like I said, the, the uh, tank pulled up directly in front of the garage door, uh, covering my vehicle and us. Uh, several SWAT members called us over to where the tank was, and then the tank proceeded to back up in a westbound direction as we followed the tank taking cover from, from, the, from the residents. Are you aware of any SWAT team members? Are you aware of any names of SWAT team members that responded that day? One that I can remember was uh, Tom, Tom, Thomas Johnson. Okay. Why do you remember him in particular? Well, he's a, he's tall, and uh, he was the one talking to us when when he when uh, when they were removing us from the scene. Okay. Do you know of any other involvement he may have had other than what you just stated? Uh, no. Once they removed us from they from the scene, they took us away from the area to us uh, up, approximately a block away in. A, when you say us, who are you referring to? Uh, myself and Deputy Newman. Okay. Um, did you ever see this robot thing that somehow was involved? Or the Sentinel device? Do you know what those are? Um, I've seen pictures of it. Uh -huh. I've never seen it in action. Have you seen pictures of it related to this incident? No. Have you seen photographs specifically taken by this device as it relates to this incident? I don't remember. I've seen a few photographs that that uh, I viewed um, with Ms. Baran uh, I apologize, Deputy Bar uh, <laughs> Attorney Barranco. I apologize. And uh, but I, I, I viewed a, a lot of photographs. I don't know. Um, do you know what the Sentinel device does? I'm I'm not completely aware of it. No, I I know it's a robot they send in. I know they have one for bomb units, but I don't know what it is now. Okay. Were there any cars parked in the driveway of the home? Civilian cars? No. Do you remember any time when Newman may have secured the back portion of the property? No, Newman, I, I, I don't recall him going anywhere except standing with taking uh, cover with me in the back of the patrol car. Okay. And how long did this music continue to play? 
for a long while. Exactly how long, I wouldn't be able to tell you, and I don't want, I'm, I'm not going to speculate. It, was play, it just continued to play all, all, for a long time. Do you know what caused it to stop playing? No. Were you there when it stopped playing? Um, yes, I believe I was. Do you remember what you were doing when it stopped playing? <laughs> we were still behind the car taking cover. Okay. Is this is before SWAT showed up? Uh, just before. Okay. So the music stopped playing before SWAT showed up, you believe? Yes. We take a quick break. Off the record, two o'clock. Let him off the hook. Back on the record, two o eight. Deputy Lopez, um, just a few f few more questions. Um, we won't be here much longer. Do you have any military experience? No, sir. What? Uh, just curious. What did? What made you want to become a law enforcement officer? Um, I'm probably you heard this story a million times. From a little kid, I always wanted to be a law enforcement officer. Okay. I was a fully qualified uh, applicant in in New York City, and it was at the time when they were um, when the mayors were being reelected and they cut back the classes. Unfortunately, I was one of those they cut back. So when I moved here, I tried it. I tried it again. Okay. Are you right hand or left hand dominant? Left hand dominant. Okay. And. Do you have any, what I'd call concurrent employment or side jobs? Do you do any of those now? No. Um, what you you mentioned off duty stuff, off duty employment earlier. What do you what do you mean by that? Details. We have details. details. That's what you said. Right, right. We have details. Um, the agency puts out details in the computers, which we're allowed to pick two a week. Um, it could range from working at the uh, at the tag office, uh, or working at the uh, commissioner's office when they have the meetings. It could be blue light details. It could, Do you get paid for that? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, before your shift on January fourteenth, two thousand fourteen. Had you had any alcohol or any drugs? No. Um, any supplements? And what I mean by that, do you take anything for like weightlifting? Um, I do proteins. Were you doing those in 2014? Uh, I believe so. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not even gonna because uh, I take them on and off. If I could afford them, I take them. If I can't afford them, I don't take them. What brands of products do you use? I use. Uh, uh, I use different products. I usually use Muscle Tech, which is whey protein. Um, you're a weightlifter, or you're, you I had like some interest. Yeah, I, I love weightlifting. Yes, okay. I love training. How often do you train? I try to train uh, for as often as possible, four or five days a week. Sometimes, if between cardio and weight training. On the day that this incident occurred, did you hear Newman say anything other than, hey? No. Never heard Hill say anything? Greg Hill? No, sir. Um, Hill was shot and killed in his own house. Is that fair? Yes. He never fired a shot? No. Hill was shot and killed through his closed garage door. Would you agree with that? Yes. Did you ever investigate Officer Newman for any crime related to this incident? No. Did you ever go up to the school and talk to any of those witnesses? No. Were you aware when you arrived that, that there were witnesses or people outside of the school? Yes. Uh, it, it, there were kids outside in the in, but in the front of the school, by the parking area, there were also civilians and and 
um, I believe school employees. There was there was people. There was people all over in, in near the school. Yes. Okay. Uh, have you ever encountered or investigated Greg Hill prior to this? No. Um, my understanding is the f the SWAT team used tear gas. Is that have you ever seen that happen before? Uh, in an in an in an incident itself, no. What do you, yeah? What do you mean by that? Well, when we train, sometimes they they let them off just so we can for training purposes. But in in an actual, uh, you know, in a disturbance or any type of of incident that they have to respond to, I've never seen them use it. Um, and that helps me. Thank you. Um, have you ever been? You ever had any on you? Tear gas? Tear gas? No, I have. We carry pepper spray. Okay. Were you involved? Well, were you ever made aware that there may have been a child inside Greg's Hill, Greg Hill's home? Once a after the shooting occurred and. Um, the, the gate was closed and we were at the back of uh, taking cover in the back of the patrol car. Uh, someone, uh, I, I don't re recall exactly or remember exactly where it came from, but someone mentioned that there, m there may have been a child in the house. Okay, and that turned out to be false. Is that fair? Yes. Um, Did Greg Hill have a right to be free from excessive force at the moment he raised his garage door? At the moment he raised his garage door? Yes, sir. Uh, can you elaborate a little better on that because... At what time, at what point, at what point did Greg Hill's constitutional rights not matter to you or Deputy Newman? Uh, when he, Go ahead. Let, me, let me fix that. At what point did Greg Hill's constitutional rights not matter to you? Check to the form. Go ahead. When he raised the gun in my direction okay. and my life was threatened. What um, criminal acts did Greg Hill commit before the garage door went up? Criminal acts? Yes, None. Sir. At what point did he commit a criminal act, in your opinion, as a law enforcement officer? When he raised the gun and threatened my life. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about training as it relates to firearms. Okay. When was the first time you ever fired a firearm? I... Um, I fired rifles in New York when, um, way back when, when, when I decided to take up hunting. I was not successful in hunting. <laughs> Let's talk about your training here okay. uh, with St. Lucie Sheriff's Office related to um, firearm use. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, we have very good uh, firearm training here. We train. Um, Four, maybe five times a year, uh, with, uh, with with scenarios, with all types of training. Um, <clears throat> firearm training usually happens to take a part of all blocks of training. We always do some firing, and it's uh, we're always brought up to date on anything new that the training unit has encountered. In uh, reference to incidents, other incidents that have taken places, um, and we get extensive—I uh, consider it to be ex uh, extensive firearm training. When, uh, where, where do these train? The, at least the firearm aspect of your training. Where do these occur? They occurred in the uh, in the firing range over at on Kirby Loop. Uh, I'm not Kirby Loop. Uh, Coolidge Road, which is now considered the uh, Gary Morales complex. And has that always been the case since your tenure here? At, has that always been the case since you began working here in 2004? Yes. That's the facility? Yes. Okay. 
have you ever been trained as it relates to firing to visualize your target before firing? Yes. Have you ever been told not to blindly fire or instructed to do, to refrain from blindly firing? Yes. Is there any policies or procedures that you're aware of with the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office that relate to blind firing? Uh, I'm sure that it says this. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, have, I don't remember. If I read it, I don't remember. But of course, yes, they always say you don't shoot unless you know what you're shooting at or you see what you're shooting at. So. Okay. Why is that important? Because you don't want to, um, you don't want to shoot or kill an innocent person or or, or wrong person. Um, I want to know a little bit about some timing issues. Do you know, can you tell me when Newman pulled his gun out? I, I couldn't tell you. I was speaking, uh, I was paying attention to Mr. Hill as he was opening the gate. I, um, as he was opening the gate, you didn't have your gun out. Is that fair? No. Um, can you tell me where Mr. Hill's gun, as it relates to moving in your direction, can you tell me where it was when Newman first fired? It was up in midway, pointed in my direction. Okay. Did you ever see the barrel, the very butt end of that gun? No. I I started to retrieve very quickly. I was... It, it was, a lot of things went through my mind right there. It was a, the most frightening moment of my life. Right, and, and you felt threatened, is that fair? That's correct. Um, but you didn't shoot anybody? No, I was retrieving and, and drawing my weapon because I knew Mr. Hill had the upper hand on me and I, I, I knew he was, I, I, I thought he was gonna kill me. He, 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 the minute he drew the, the minute he lifted the gun in my direction and I knew my gun wasn't drawn, I, I felt he was going to shoot and kill me. Okay. Why do you feel like Greg Hill had the upper hand? His gun was out on his hand when when I when I when I saw it. His gun was already in his hand by the by his by his leg when I when I saw the gun. And uh, he started to raise it and I, 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 my arm, my hand was just getting to my gun when he was already raising his gun. You had a gun. Yes, I did. And you had backup. Who also had a gun? Correct. You still feel like Mr. Gro Mr. Hill had the upper hand. Yes. Do you believe it's possible Mr. Hill was de-escalating the situation at the moment he was shot? No. Well, I'm sorry. Why not? Why not? <clears throat> because he was raising the gun in my direction. Okay. You don't believe he was reaching with his right hand with the gun in it to help lower that gun, the, mm. lower the door? No. So, you believe Mr. Hill, the threat inside the garage, even after Mr. Newman fired, or Deputy Newman fired, in order to shoot you, he had to shoot you through the garage. Is that fair? 
he would have to shoot us through the garage door, or unless there was, a, 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 yes, he would have to shoot us through the garage door. Blindly. <clears throat> yes, I guess. I shouldn't be guessing, but yes. Because he was putting the, the door down, or he had put the door down, is that fair? Yes. Okay. Um, were you in uniform at the moment you arrived at 1501 Avenue Q? Yes. Um, tell me about that uniform. Um, what color is it? It's a green uniform. <clears throat> it's a green uh, shirt's office uniform. It has patches on the sleeves. It has my uh, my star on on my uh, left side of my uh, chest. It has my ID and my little uh, American flag above my ID on the top. Both are on top of my uh, the pockets of my shirt. Okay. Um, as it relates to identifying marks, insignia, or patches, those are all on the shirt. Is that fair? Yes. There's nothing below your belt all the way down to your shoes that identify you as a sheriff's officer. Except the, no, no, no markings, no. Okay. <clears throat> I have nothing further now. I just have a couple of follow-up questions, Deputy Lopez. Sure. Um, just to clarify, a few times you used the term gate, and you mentioned that earlier, but I just want to clarify, when you've referred to the word gate in your deposition, what were you referring to? The garage door. Okay, so when you were telling us about Mr. Hill lowering the gate, you were, you meant to say lowering the garage door? The garage door. Okay. Um, he did it too. Yeah, but I just want to clarify for the record, so there's no confusion. And I know you told us that English is your second language. Well, at home, yes. I mean, I'm, we predominantly speak Spanish, but at work, it's uh, English is what I speak. Okay. Yeah. Well, one thing I wanted to clarify with you, Deputy Lopez, is I recall plaintiff's counsel asking you a question about at what point did Mr. Hill's constitutional rights no longer matter to you? You remember that question? Yes. And then your response said some. You said something about at the point that he raised the firearm in my direction, something along those lines. Correct. Right. Um, in terms of Mr. Hill's constitutional rights, do you understand that uh, he's he, as are all citizens, free from unreasonable searches and seizures? Is that right? That's correct. And in this particular situation. Do you believe that Deputy Newman um, using deadly force on Mr. Hill was in reaction to an imminent threat of deadly force that Mr. Hill had toward you? Yes. And I know you're not a lawyer, but would you agree with me that that would not then be an unreasonable seizure? I do. I have no further questions. Um, and also, one follow-up. You used the gate. Uh, if you've used the gate in prior statements, you mean the garage door? I mean the garage door, yes. Does he think in English or Spanish? <laughs> Do you think in English or Spanish? I, I think in English. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no further questions. This deposition is concluded at 226.